Good morning. I'm Mike Moon, speaking to you from my office at your capital here in Jefferson City. Well, we just finished our first week of the new legislative session, the, the second general session of the 98th General Assembly. And this week was a pretty slow week, but I filed a few bills that I think you might be interested in. One protects police officers in that currently police officers are required to list their primary address on the driver's license. And if it happens that they arrest someone who, after serving their sentence, wants to, uh, to get even with them, then they can easily look up their address. So a, a particular bill, 2051, will allow the police officers to add a secondary or even tertiary address to their driver's license so to make it more difficult for perpetrators to find them and mete out uh, some type of um, a revenge against them. And so we need to protect our law enforcement officers and this will be the right step in doing so. Another bill we filed will help our military personnel find it easier to meet the requirement for hunting privileges in the state of Missouri. Currently, if you were born before January 1st, 1967, you own land or you lease land that you plan to hunt on, you don't have to meet the requirement from uh, the current hunter safety education. So if you're born after that date though, you have to take the course, which is a good course. I've taken it several times myself. But imagine this, you completed advanced training you have surpassed what is required in the basic hunter education program. And so this bill will allow uh, individuals who have completed advanced training to be exempted from the hunter education safety program. And I think this will make it easier for those men and women who are uh, honorably serving our country to protect you and me uh, from domestic and foreign enemies, to make it easier for them to go out in the hunting fields and enjoy their time and, uh, and collect a harvest that they can provide for themselves and their families too. Another bill filed is HCR 64 and it is the application for calling for a convention of states. Article 5 in the United States Constitution offers uh, one of two different methods to amend the Constitution. One is the current Congress. They're a standing convention and they can at any time propose an amendment to be sent to the states for ratification. It, it doesn't seem likely that our current Congress is going to offer any good amendment that's going to rein in their power and authority. So the second half of Article 5 allows for the states to call a convention where they can meet together and propose amendments that would be good for reining in the power and authority of the federal government. You know, we have a runaway spending federal government. Nineteen plus trillion dollars we're in debt. And who's going to pay that? It's your children and your grandchildren who are going to be saddled with that debt. That's one foremost opportunity we have today in calling a convention is to require a balanced budget from our federal authorities. Secondly, the 17th Amendment in its original intent was to provide a voice for the states in the federal government. The U.S. Senators are now elected, though, uh, by popular vote. And so they have no reason to, uh, to listen to the, to the General Assembly of Missouri. And so we need to repeal the 17th Amendment so that the U.S. Senators are beholden to the General Assembly and they would re restore and return the voice of the people and the state to the federal government. Lastly, we filed Bill 1794 and it's called the All Lives Matter Act. This particular bill, if passed, will amend a current statute in Chapter 1, Section 205, which can you believe that in 1988 when this statute was passed, the Missouri General Assembly found that life begins at conception. They also say that the unborn child and the natural parents have a protectable interest in the life and health of that unborn child. I think that's great. But if you look down in Section 2 of that statute, it says that this provision is subject to decisional interpretations of the Supreme Court. So that means that Roe v. Wade is the supposed law of the land. Well, I ask you a question. Which law was passed after Roe v. Wade by the U.S. Congress to allow women to kill their unborn children? There was no law passed. 
And so we need to exercise our state sovereignty according to the Ninth and Tenth Amendments of the U.S. Constitution by passing House Bill 1794. And just like the General Assembly did back in 1988, recognize that life begins at conception, and this bill will add an additional element. It will deem that life is a human being. So in order to take that life, they'll have to have due process in court, in a court of law, in order to do so. So I hope that uh, you will uh, support these measures and that you'll pass this video on to your friends and your family and uh, you'll support what we're doing here in Jefferson City. And as always, if you have some concerns that uh, you need my assistance, I hope you'll give me a call. Our office number in Jefferson City is 753-751-4077 or you can contact me at my email address at mike.moon at house.mo.gov and I'll be happy to get back in touch with you. And I hope you'll follow us on Facebook and Twitter.